our next session will be followed uh, as a hands on session by uh, mr abushan on convection so all of you can get ready for the session so i hope you enjoyed the lecture on uh, heat transfer in a pump uh, the theory lecture now it's time to actually do what we are taught like what you just learned in open form so as you can see uh, on day 2 we only did a uh, fluid flow simulation now we are going to add heat transfer on top of that uh, fluid flow simulation uh, in heat transfer in open form uh, there is a different way to do it there are different solvers for it uh, if you are only if you only are only interested in uh, heat transfer in solid we will also be doing that so we have a laplacian foam uh, session at 115 by krishnakant but this session is all about convection so the outline of uh, this session would be on heat transfer solvers that are available in open form and we are going to see how convective heat transfer through a pipe can be done in open form and we are going to use axis symmetric sim simulation so yesterday professor manishri taj a lecture you might have learned or saw the wedge geometry we are going to use that geometry today and we will be also talking about boundary condition that is applied and what kind of boundary condition are we going to use on the wedge side of that axis symmetric uh, mesh and at the end i'm going to provide you some assignment that you can do at your own time so there are different heat transfer solvers available laplacian foam uh wind pimple foam wind simple foam uh since this talk is on convective uh, heat transfer i'm only providing those solvers that do convection heat transfer problem in open form so first one is boen pimple foam uh boen pimple foam and boen simple foam is quite similar to each other only difference being that boen pimple foam is a transient solver and boen simple foam is a steady state solver now this both of the solver are for compressible fluid and includes heat transfer radiation uh, and, and and such and so, so and so on now cst multi region foam uh, cst stands for conjugate heat transfer so if you have a heat transfer problem where heat is transferred from a fluid region to a solid region and vice versa then you can use cst multi region foam uh, if you want to simulate heat exchangers uh, such kind of problem then you can use cst multi region foam now this is a transient solver and it also involves buoyant and turbulent fluid flow along with solid heat conduction now since we are going to use buoyant simple foam today i'm going to this is the file structure that is in the buoyant simple foam so similar to any other cases we have zero constant and system directory and inside zero directory you are seeing that there are two extra term those are p r g h and then temperature so initially there would be only u and p uh, where it would be stand for velocity and pressure now we have one more term prgs and since this problem involves heat transfer uh, there is a file for temperature as well and if you see at constant we have two extra file uh, those are thermophysical properties and then g the g file will give you uh, if you want to provide gravity in your simulation you can provide uh, whether you want to provide gravity or not or the direction of the gravity you can provide it in your g file and in thermal physical properties the properties of your fluid or your solid in your domain you can provide in the thermal physical properties uh turbulence properties file is similar as before you can provide if you want to use turbulent or laminar you can provide uh, that in turbulence properties and what kind of model do you want to use you want to use k epsilon k omega that you can for in turbulence properties okay now this is the problem that we are going to uh, do simulation of today is a con convective heat transfer problem through a pipe uh, so our pipe is about 5 meter long and initially the pipe the section of the pipe that you see in the black color it is not heated and we expect the pipe to be fully developed after certain length and after which we are going to heat the pipe now the red section that you are seeing is the section where we heat the pipe and before that before this red section on the on this black section over here we are going to give adiabatic boundary condition and here we are going to provide the heat flux or temperature 
Now the properties that we are going to use, uh, the pipe will be of the radius 0 0.05 meter and the length is five meter. And we are the, pro the fluid that is flowing through the pipe is a air and we are giving the molecular weight and the density of the air and a specific heat along with viscosity and thermal conductivity. These properties will be provided in the file thermophysical properties. And the heat flux at the wall that we're going to provide is 20 watt per meter square and the inlet fluid temperature is going to be 300 Kelvin. Now, since we're going to simulate a laminar flow, we are keeping the real loss number at 500. And we can, we have an empirical reason for entrance length that is 0 0.06 in times real loss number times the characteristic dimension D, which will be three meter. So after this three meter at 3.5 meter, we are going to provide this heat flux. So this is the axisymmetric geometry uh, in open form. So instead of uh, solving the whole pipe domain, we are only going to solve one part of it. The reason that we can do this is because our uh, solution would be axisymmetric. That means that the in theta direction, so we have a direction. So we have a direction, this is the R direction and we have a theta direction. And in theta direction, the solution doesn't change at all because the problem itself is axisymmetric because of which we are able to just simulate a part of the domain uh, that is a wet shape. And then just say that this, sim this solution that we get will be same in the theta direction or azimuthal direction. Uh, again, this is the axisymmetric geometry in open form. So our, the block that we are going to create in block mist will be of this shape. And it, it is necessary that the angle of that block should be at five or less than five degree uh, for our simulation to be accurate. Uh, excuse now, me, I have a question. Yes. The yes. uh, top part should not be curved. Why it is flat yeah. means at the top, top so, part should not be curved. So no need for it to be curved since this is an approximation. So if you, if you join this small, small ways, you will end up with a circle. We just assume that uh, the degree, the degree is kept less than five degree so that we won't get any error in our solution. We will get error, but that will be very small enough. And we just assume okay. that this assumption- This is an approximation, yeah, right? Yeah, it's an approximation. Is... Okay. 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 So I want all of you to go to this uh, link bit.ly358 uh, SRMP and then download the folder hit flux. Uh, you can just copy it. I'm going to type it uh, in the chat box as well. I'm going to give you guys some time to download the file that I'm going to use. So if you click on that link or you go through that link, you will end up in uh, this uh, OneDrive. And if you click on this download, you will download this heat flux. I'm going to click on it. So it is downloaded. So we'll be using that file later on. So right now you can just carry, we will just carry on with the lecture. So yeah, again, if you click on the download, you will be able to download. Uh, you have to extract a zip file. Now, if you download the zip file and extract all the files and uh, you can either copy it to your run directory, or uh, if you are using VirtualBox, you can just use this command and go to the downloads. However, if you are using WSL, I want you guys to use, uh, go to this run directory and then do explorer.exe space dot and then copy that extracted zip file over there. Or you can just mount your drive and go to the download. Uh, if you have confusion right now, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do that later. So again, this is the buoyant simple form file structure. So let's discuss uh, some of the important part of this uh, file structure. Uh, this is the mesh, the block mesh that we have, we are using to build. So this is how our block mesh is. And we are using two blocks here. So this is our first block and this is our second block. And for 3.5 meter length, we have one block. And after 1.5 meter, we have the other block. 
uh, we are using two blocks because in this block we are providing the heat flux or the temperature at the wall however in this uh, wall or in in this wall of this block we are providing adiabatic boundary condition which is why we are using two different block uh, you can if you want to see how this block uh, mesh stick is made you can just go to the system and block mesh stick there you can see uh, don't worry about it we'll see later on as well now the boundary condition that we will be providing uh, at the inlet, we are going to provide 0 0.073 meter per second uh, for Reynolds number of 500. And at it, this is for velocity. And at the adiabatic wall, we are going to provide no slip boundary condition. And similarly, at the heated wall, we are going to provide no slip boundary condition. And for outlet, we are going to give zero gradient boundary condition. This is for velocity only and for pressure. We are going to give zero gradient boundary condition everywhere, but at outlet, we are going to fix the pressure at zero Pascal. Now, the temperature uh, at the inlet, we are going to give 300 Kelvin. And at the uh, can, you, wall, can you explain the pressure boundary condition? Why this is zero gradient in everywhere? Can you explain a little bit? So, at pressure is zero gradient at the wall because uh, at, at the wall, we don't have flow in the normal direction, right? Because this is a okay. wall, it's a no penetrating boundary condition and we don't have flow in the normal direction. So if there is no flow in the normal direction, that means, uh, so for, for the flow to happen, there must be some pressure gradient, right? If the, yes. the So if there is no flow, that means the pressure gradient in the normal direction is zero. So at the wall, dp by dx or equals to zero, x by y, whatever. Did you got it? Okay. Yes. Why at the inlet? zero gradient at the inlet so at the inlet we are providing zero gradient because uh, we can do one thing either we can give pressure at the inlet or at the outlet it doesn't matter right now we are providing zero pressure at the outlet and what open foam does is during the solving part uh, it is going to this is a reference pressure uh, since the value of the pressure doesn't matter but the pressure difference matters the flow happens because of the pressure difference delta p not because of the value of the pressure. So if we are providing zero PA, though during the calculation, the open form will provide some higher pressure over here. Let's just assume five PA. And for that calculation, we are providing uh, zero gradient at the inlet. But it should not be zero gradient, means it is over specified, uh, means there should be the pressure difference, right, at the inlet. That's yeah, why the yeah. flow is happening. Yeah, that's why the flow is happening because of the pressure different. Uh, but we don't know that for the, so there is two way of uh, defining one is the velocity driven flow and one is the pressure driven flow so if you were to uh, give pressure here let's say 5 pa then you will not be able to give inlet velocity over here that would be pressure driven flow so in such case here you will be providing zero gradient in the pressure in the velocity boundary condition why because that velocity will be calculated from the pressure difference that we are giving right now this is a velocity driven flow so we know what is the velocity. Yeah, just let me explain this. We know that our velocity is 0 0.073 meter per second. And at our outlet, we are fixing some pressure. It can be zero or five. This is just an arbitrary value. You can give it any uh, value. And it will just uh, calculate what pressure that we have to give here so that our flow will maintain this 0 0.073 velocity at the inlet. Did you got it? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. There was other someone wanted to ask me some other question. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in the heated wall boundary condition where you have given fixed gradient, uh, so sir, how we will we spe specify the heat flux like Q by K? What is K? So, uh, K is the thermal conductivity, Q is the heat flux. Okay, so, sir, sir. Yeah, heat flux. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So if you uh, let's go back. Yeah. So Q is the heat flux to the wall, and our thermal conductivity is zero point zero two four two. So what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to give a uh, temp temperature gradient, which is Q. If Q equals to dt by dx by k, we know that dt by dx must be equals to Q by K. So we know the value of Q, you know the value of K, and this is how we are going to provide it in our open form. 
So that's why I've written Q by K here. That is DT by DX fixed gradient. This gradient is of temperature. That is DT by DK. Okay. Now, so the inlet temperature is 300 Kelvin and at adiabatic wall, we're providing zero gradient. And at the heated wall, we're giving a fixed gradient boundary condition, which is being derived from the heat flux and the thermal conductivity, which I just showed you. And we have zero gradient at the outlet. Now, this is the boundary condition. Uh, this is how we provide the boundary condition in, of temperature in open form. So at, uh, the adiabatic boundary condition is given by type zero gradient. Zero gradient just means that we have zero gradient as the name suggests. And at the heated pipe, we are giving fixed gradient. And at the pipe heated length, we are giving fixed gradient. And the gradient that we are providing is 826.45, which is being calculated like this. That is 20 divided by 0 0.024, where 20 is our heat flux, and this is our thermal conductivity K. Now, the back and front is of type weights. So, type weights is similar to the empty boundary condition. That means we won't do the, the calculation in the direction of the weights. But since this is a weights, we are providing the weights, weights boundary condition here. So, again, this is the boundary condition that is being provided. We have two weights, that is patch, weights patch one and weights patch two. Uh, in 2D simulation, you might have noticed that we are giving uh, empty boundary condition. So if this is a 2D simulation here and at this wall, we would be providing empty boundary condition. So this is quite similar to that. Uh, this is a weights patch. So here we provide instead of empty weights in the direction where we don't want to do the calculation. Now, thermophysical properties, uh, it is one of the very important uh, file in our simulation since it contains the equation that we are going to use as well as uh, like the parameters or the properties of the fluid that we are defining. So it helps us to construct a fluid thermal model that allows us to specify the thermophysical model. So let's start with this top thing. So this is the thermophysical model for fixed composition. That means uh, there is only one composition in our mixture. And it assumes that, uh, so it is based on density, hence the name rho. The F stands for enthal uh, enthalpy and e, e stands for entropy. And in the mixture, we are uh, assuming that our mixture is a fixed composition, hence pure mixture. That means there is no reaction happening or whatever variables, let's say if we may, we may have water or uh, air in our mixture, we are assuming that there is no reaction between them and suddenly the water will not change into air or something like that. So hence we are giving pure mixture and transport property is constant. Transport property is constant. We are, it means that we are assuming the viscosity is constant. Uh, not only viscosity, also the branded number is constant. So if you want to do simulation of blood flow where the viscosity changes with the shear strain or stress, then you may want to provide some other transport properties here. And the thermo is, uh, uh, this assumes that our, is, this assumes that our is specific is CP and our heat of fusion is constant. It doesn't changes. And lastly, we have sensible internal heat. So, internal energy is used in our solution here and there are two options available one is sensible and other is absolute internal heat so if you want to include heat of formation as well then you have to use absolute but since we don't want to use uh, heat of formation we don't have a phase is happening right now so we are using sensible so if you but if so you want in, to, in, in, yeah. excuse me in energy section there is one of is sensible enthalpy yeah there is one more there sensible is... enthalpy yes uh -huh. yeah so what is the use of sensible internal energy and what is difference means in sensible enthalpy energy and sensible internal energy in so this case there is two way to uh, solve any heat transfer problem so either you can use uh, enthalpy transport equation or you can use entropy transport equation so based on that what you want to use you can provide it uh, you will get approximately the almost the same answer However, right now we are providing uh, using, solving this equation using internal energy. 
thermo section also there is h const and e const so yeah, yeah. when we when we use the h const and when we, when we will yeah. use e const it, yeah when you use h constant you are using internal when you use e then you you, are, you may want to use the entropy but you have an idea or scenario when we should use h const and when we should use e const any specific thing so, because two uh, options and it should have different use cases yeah there are two so it's just that uh, there are two ways to so do the same thing uh, right now i cannot think of any problem where you want to use one cases specifically uh, but in general like most of the problem that we do uh, you can go with any route you'll get almost the same answer uh, with slight changes because of the numerical errors okay okay thank you thank you now uh, if you go below to the thermal proper thermal physical properties you will get to this section where we provide our molecular weight and then equation of state we provide density and then we provide cp and hf hf stands for heat of formation that means whenever there is change of phase uh, we need to provide heat formation right now there is no heat formation so this is just a placeholder right now and this is the viscosity and this is the planted number uh, excuse me molecular weight is going to affect in our simulation or we can put any number so right now in this it, case yeah right now it doesn't affect because there is uh, no heat uh, like there is no phase change and we have only one uh, fluid this uh, we can use buoyant simple form to simulate different mixer in such case you may want to use molecular weight in only in such case the molecular weight will affect okay thank you so the commands to uh, run that file is block miss as usual with misses our uh, block and then go in simple form which will run our solver and write the result uh, in the heat flux folder and then we can finally visualize using paraform uh, now i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys uh, the actual simulation so uh, this is the heat flux uh, file that i downloaded i'm going to extract it So it has been extracted. So inside heat flux, I have another heat flux, flux file. Uh, let me open my. So uh, if you forgot any of the command that you used before, what you can do is you can type history, and you can go above and see what commands that you have used uh, before. This is one of the thing I use frequently. So I'm going to use this command cd. This thing I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it in a chat box. This is for the people who are using double SL. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what this command does is this command will uh, direct you to a directory to watch your downloads. Here, I'm using Regme because in my PC, my PC name is Regme. Your PC name may be different. It may be something else other. So, just uh, you can find figure out by going to this PC. And then you can go to users. So here it is Regme. Uh, in your case, it may be something else. You can just uh, edit that part and put your PC name. So if I press enter here, it will direct me to downloads. Now I am finally in this directory. Yes, anybody uh, want to ask anything? Yes, sir. I have one doubt, sir, because you are installing the Ubuntu OS, sir. We are, but we are we are what we are installing. We are installing only the Ubuntu terminal, sir. By you, you copy them by uh, copying this path means uh, I can be able to copy only in the Windows 11 path. So uh, can I paste now? It's not opening, sir. Uh, actually, I didn't understand if you said. So okay. I'm I'm also using uh, WSL only. This is just a terminal. This is not a Ubuntu. You can see this is a window, right? I think okay. we are on the same boat here. So this is why I was providing you this command. Which I have pasted in the chat box. So what this command does? Okay, is this command will direct you to your download section, download directory. So uh, actually, if, uh, yeah. if, cell, uh, if if I am copying means it's uh, it's, it's copy like uh, uh, work. Uh, C uh, double slash slash user slash nine one six three desktop slash something coming now, sir. Uh, for uh, the error is showing that command not found. C program command is not pro found. You're trying to copy something? 
yes sir uh, yesterday i am trying for uh, we are using the blender directly by using the terminal sir uh, but uh, same command i am trying here sir it's showing command like that okay right. please sir we will fix this issue after this uh, session okay uh, sir thank you thank you present your screen so as i said right now we are in this directory downloads and uh, so right now i am in this file so if i want to go to my heat flux all i have to do is cd heat flux now i'm in my heat flux but since this is extracted i have another heat flux inside my heat flux just be careful of that and now i'm going to go to my actual heat flux by typing the same command and finally i'm able to see my zero constant in system okay now let's b what is inside the zero i have t u p and p r g s i haven't talked about p r g s uh, p r g s is just the pressure without the hydrostatic component so if you subtract p minus rho times g you will get the prgs so it is just a different uh, form of pressure where we have subtracted the hydrostatic term that is rho times g uh, why are we using this uh, it is because it is convenient uh, so whenever you are trying to solve heat equation energy equation um, it is convenient to use this modified pressure instead of this pressure that we are using before on top of that say if you are using uh, you are trying to solve solve some multi phase problem so imagine there is a water and above the water there is an air so if you want to uh, solve or find gradient across this interface between air and water so there is a certain jump in density right the density of water is th in thousand and the density of air is in terms of 1.22 something so because we, of this certain jump the gradient will also have jump so we don't want that it may cause uh, some inconsistency in our solver so to mitigate that we are we, we are using prgs in multi phase flow here we are using prgs just for the convenience so let me open the t file first okay sorry mm -hmm. so as you can see i uh, did a mistake i need to provide the proper directory here so since it is inside the t file yeah there is row g at also did i said only row g it is supposed to be row g at okay so since it is inside uh, zero i am providing the path zero as well here so now uh, okay this is my uh, t file that is inside zero it contains boundary condition for t so initially we are going to give uh, uniform one boundary it means that when our simulation starts the whole field will be the whole temperature of my domain will be one so uh, you might have noticed that in pressure and velocity we would provide zero but now we are giving it one why because if you give temperature at zero our solution will not solve uh, it, it's like dividing zero by zero so this won't work uh, this is an absolute temperature so we we need to give some value any value that is greater than zero hence right now we are giving just one and this is the inlet at inlet we are giving 300 kelvin and it is uniform and at outlet we are providing zero get in boundary condition and at adiabatic part of the wall we are giving zero gradient and similarly as i uh, showed you in my presentation at the heated section we are giving fixed gradient and the gradient is calculated like this 82.645 this is the temperature gradient and it is being calculated by dividing q with the thermal conductivity k and at the back and front which is our wedge in this case we are giving wedge boundary condition now let's see the p so here we actually don't need to provide any boundary condition for p this is not even necessary without the p file our simulation will run but we would like to see the actual pressure when we try to visualize our simulation so the pressure p is being calculated so it will be calculated based on the uh, the prgs value that is being actually solved in, in our equation so so i said right p r g s equals p minus rho times g times uh, h so p r g s equals to p minus rho times g times h and 
Now we know that PRGS using rho G and H, we are going to find out P. This is how this calculated thing is being done. So we are giving calculated boundary condition in all the patches, except for back and uh, front, which is our wage patch. I'm just going to remove it. And okay, now we, we are going to see velocity. So at inlet, we are providing fixed value and that value is 0 0.073. Be careful while providing this uh, uniform. Since this is a vector, uh, I'm giving my velocity in the X direction. This depends on your mesh, how you have mesh your geometry. If your inlet is in X direction, you need to give it in X direction. If your inlet is in Y direction, you need to give in Y direction. Now at outlet, we are giving zero graded boundary condition. And at pipe adiabatic and pipe heated, which is the wall, we are providing no slip boundary condition. And similarly to other cases at back and front, we are giving width boundary condition. Okay. Now let's see the modified pressure. So initially at inlet, we would be giving a uh, zero graded boundary condition if it was just a P folder, but right now we are giving fixed flux. So what does this fixed flux pressure do? It is similar to zero gradient boundary condition, but it takes in account of the uh, other body forces, say gravity force. Right now our uh, problem does not involve body forces like gravity, but if, you, if, you, if it were to involve, then it takes care of that as well. So that is the difference between just a zero gradient boundary condition and fixed flux pressure. And at the outlet, we are giving PRGS pressure. Uh, so before we would provide some uh, pressure at the boundary condition, pressure equals to zero, but this is PRGS, this is not P. So we need to calculate PRGS based on the value of P that is being provided. So at here, we are providing the value of P, which is uniform zero. So based on the value that we have provided, it is going to find out the PRGS value using the same equation P minus rho times G times S. So using this, it is going to find out the PRGS and it is going to give that value at the outlet. And at adiabatic, again, fixed flux pressure, this is similar to zero gradient as I pointed out. And same at the pipe heated, these two are just the walls. And at back and front, we have weights. Uh, let me clear the screen. Now that we have gone through all those files at the P, let's look at the constant. So in constant, we have G thermophysical properties and turbulence properties. Let's look at G first. Here we are providing our direction of gravity. Uh, we have neglected gravity for our problem. That's why the value is just zero, zero, zero. If you want to provide gravity, let's say in Z direction, you can do so by, by giving here 9.8. But right now we are not providing any uh, gravity. So let's look at the thermophysical properties, which is the most important file. So as I saw in my presentation, this is how our thermophysical uh, file is. So this is a thermophysical uh, model for fixed composition uh, that is based on density. And we are giving pure mixture as a mixture. That means uh, there is no reaction that is happening in our mixture. Uh, if you had like two different uh, compo uh, two different composition in our mixture, let's say uh, carbon dioxide and then uh, air, there is no reaction between them. Uh, but here we have only one mixture that is air. So we don't need to worry about anything. And in transport, we are giving constant transport. That means our viscosity and Prandtl number is constant. Uh, like I said, uh, say if your viscosity depends on temperature or if your viscosity depends, if you have a non newtonian fluid, then you can just change this parameter. There are different uh, models that is available in open form. You can give that over here. And in third mode, we are using as constant. So it, it assumes that our specific heat is constant and heat of fusion is uh, also constant. And equation of state, we are giving rho constant. I think I forgot to talk about equation of state. So in equation of state, we can provide uh, different uh, parameters. So rho constant assumes that our 
density is constant. There are other uh, parameters that you can uh, apply, like business approximation, and the one where the temperature depends on some polynomial expression. Expression, and species is species uh, in species is just means that the it specifies the composition of each con constituent, like uh, number of moles, such kind of thing is uh, used here. So because we have used species uh, in here, we need to only provide a molecular weight. And these are just the properties of our mixer. So molecular weight is 28.9, this is of air, and density is 1.225. We are using constant density here uh, in our equation of state. If we were to use a business approximation, then we would also need to provide rho and along with the rho, the temperature and the value of beta uh, over here. And in thermodynamics, we are providing CP, uh, specific heat, uh, and then heat of formation, which is zero in our case. And this is the viscosity, and this is the Pendulous number. Now, let's look at our turbulence properties. So since our simulation is laminar, there is nothing to it. It is just laminar. We not we need not to write any other dictionary. Even if we wrote any other dictionary for our turbulence, it will just ignore it. So let's see what is inside our system. So as usual, we have control leak, every skin, and every solution. Let's see how our block mix is done. So this is the vertices that we are providing. Uh, just remember the weight shape figure that was uh, shown to you before that had two different blocks. So this is the first block where we have adiabatic uh, boundary condition at the wall. And this is the second block where we are providing uh, flux condition. And we are not giving any curve bound, curve edges. That's why this is empty. So this is how the inlet is defined. So one may notice that how to create a waste. Uh, so previously there would be uh, four different uh, vertices for one face, but now we have only three. So you can just uh, repeat the value where the weights happens. Like at the axis of the weights, we have zero and then three. So you can you just have to repeat it. And these are the boundaries: inlet, outlet, pipe, adiabatic, pipe heated. We are just giving the uh, numbering of the face in our boundary. And we are not using any more space space. So now that it's clear, let's run our simulation. So to run our simulation, first, first I'm going to do block mesh, which will mesh my geometry. Okay. I have not uh, sourced my open form. I have multiple versions of open form in my system. So if I do OF9, it will actually load uh, open form 9 in my system. You don't need to do that if you have only one version of open form. So now that I type block mesh, it has uh, missed my geometry. Now I'm going to plant fluent simple form, which should draw on my solver. This should take a while because we are solving, now we are solving multiple equation here. We have velocity, pressure, and then energy equation. So as you can see, uh, here we have ux, ui, uz, and e. Uh, we have E because uh, in our thermophysical properties, we had given sensible internal energy, and E stands for internal energy. If you were to give uh, sensible enthalpy, then it would be H here. That means we will be solving energy equation based on the enthalpy. So it is still being solved. Let's just wait for a while. Uh, someone is asking why the value of G is 0, 0, 0. We are not, we are not considering uh, gravity at this in our simulation right now. How to pulse? You can just scroll your mouse. If you scroll your mouse, it will pulse. And if you want to continue, just press enter. OK, our simulation has ended. And let's view our result. If you are using uh, virtual box, you can just view it using Terraform. But now we are using WSL, so let's do some extra work. So I'm creating a dummy file towards result.form. If I do that, and if I type ls, now I will have this file result.form. 
this uh, this can be used this can be opened by paraview to uh, view our simulation result so i'm going to do explorer.exe space dot this will open my directory in file explorer so as you can see i am inside my download heat flux and heat flux so this is the dummy file that i created and i'm going to click on it open it i'm going to click on apply so this is the pressure right now we are at 100 uh, iteration or 100 time step i'm going to view the latest time step and this is my pressure if i want to view uh, velocity this is how my velocity is so as you can see here the boundary layer is developing and somewhere in between that is around 3 meter my this developing boundary layer becomes constant and we say that my our uh, flow is fully developed. Let's see at temperature. So as you can see, the temperature is 300 because supplied 300 over here. Uh, the green, sorry, the blue is 300. And since the year we have adiabatic boundary condition, there is no change in temperature. And finally, after 3.5 meter, we are providing heat flux because of which our temperature at the wall changes. And we have temperature boundary layer along the wall. Now, if you want to visualize uh, the plot of temperature or velocity. Sir, uh, can I ask one question? Yes. Sir, uh, when you were showing the pressure, uh, the values were very little. So uh, these were not uh, absolute pressure. They were relative pressure because atmospheric pressure is 10 to the power of 5 pascals. This is indeed uh, an absolute, I would say, absolute pressure. But here, it doesn't matter the value of pressure. So you you want to say that the value of uh, pressure is very less, right? Yes, sir. Because at the boundary condition, if you have noticed at the outlet, we had given zero pressure, right? You okay, that? sir. So based okay, on that, sir. it is calculating the inlet pressure. So okay, the sir. value of the pressure doesn't matter. If, if I, I can provide 100 uh, in, in place of zero, and I would get the same result. It's just that the, my value at the outlet will be 100 plus whatever this value over here is. Okay. Uh, around 200 something. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. And this is the PRGH. Uh, this is the modified pressure that was being calculated. But since our case, we are ignoring gravity, our PRGH and P is same. That's why the UC no changes it in the team. And again, so this is the temperature. So I was going to show you guys how we can plot uh, our value of temperature velocity profile at any given length. So first you have to click on this plot over line. And instead of just typing 0.1 and 0.2, I want my uh, line to be aligned. So I'm just going to click Y axis. Why I'm going to click Y axis, you can see the axis direction here. So this is Y. So I'm going to click on Y axis and my my line is somewhere over here. I want it to be somewhere over here. Uh, let's say, let's type five meters since my pipe is a five meter length. So as you can see, uh, the line that I'm going to plot across is over here. I'm going to click on apply. So this is giving me different uh, variable. We have P, P, R, G, S, T, and U magnitude. Some of the values are very high, some are very less because of which we cannot get any information. So what I'm going to do is go over here uh, at my left and see these parameters. And then I'm going to click on this all. And I'm going to uncheck that again so that I don't have any values left. So one by one, I'm going to click on my the parameters that is of my interest. So let's first see the temperature. So this is how my temperature is changing along my uh, radial direction. So initially at the zero we have 304 zero means at the center we have 300 kelvin 304 kelvin and it slowly increases to 330 kelvin let's see the u magnitude that is velocity so this is how my uh, velocity is so uh, my velocity would be a uh, parabolic profile and since this is symmetric case i'm only able to see half of that parabolic profile so at center i have my maximum velocity which is 0 0.143719 and it is parabolic interval. Now let's see uh, pressure. 
So seeing pressure doesn't make uh, much sense in this direction. It would make uh, sense if you were to uh, see it in the this z direction. Sorry, in this case, it is x direction. So I'm just going to click on the x and click on apply. So where am I at? OK. Uh, this is my point one. I want it to be a zero. I want to see. Okay, I'm gonna delete it and I'm gonna plot over the line again. So this is how my pressure is uh, uh, pressure profile develops across the line. So initially at the entrance, my pressure is very high. That is 0 0.0249. It may not be high, but it is just larger than the my zero. So what we have to look is the pressure difference, not the absolute value of pressure, as I pointed out before. So at the outlet, the pressure is zero, as we define in our boundary condition. And based on that, the pressure boundary condition at the end date was given zero gradient. And based on this value of pressure, it is going to calculate the pressure in uh, the inlet and throughout my domain, so that it will maintain that flow of 0 0.07 uh, meter per second around that. So this is how you simulate convective heat transfer through a pipe. Uh, sir, I have one question, sir. Yeah, you can ask me a question. Because, yes. Sir, sometimes uh, our ge geometry is not well oriented in x, y, z direction. So yeah. at that time, sir, we want to plot uh, along any line, any line uh, um, for my desired variable. Suppose that line is inclined. So how can I draw in para form, sir? Can you show, sir? Yeah, I'm going to show that to you. Uh, it is best that you incline, you make your geometry so that it is yeah, sir, just like sir, we are using in full band sir, probe, we can using probe for detect the point. So yeah. like that, can I use here, sir? Any option? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. Just like in sir, uh, in, ca in case of CFD post, sir, in full band. OK. Sir, uh, at, at, at that place, sir, we are using probe for detecting that point and drawing the line uh, uh, where we want to plot that uh, our desired variable. So how can I do here, sir? Is there any option? So like we want to draw inclined line. Is there any option, sir? Yeah, there's an option to draw an inclined line. So say I'm going to delete this. I'm going to do a plot over line. So because that, I don't know the dimension yeah. uh, points, uh, the location of so, the points, but so randomly. You need to yeah. know the location of the point for that. But even though you don't know, there's a uh, approximate thing that we can do. We can just drag this here. So if your uh, orientation of your uh, geometry is according to this, it will only change in x and y direction. It won't change in the direction that is perpendicular to you. So as you can see, when I drag uh, this, my here it is also changing. So the value of z here is uh, close to zero, so it is not changing. So let's say I want to uh, plot across this this uh, line that is not oriented to my any of the axis. Okay, you can just make it zero and you can click on apply. So this way also oh, you can. Like, it's, so, yeah. it's heat and trial like that, man. Yeah, it's a heat and trial, but uh, but it, it's not a heat and trial because if you are making the geometry uh, by yourself, you know the value of uh, what what do you want to know? Like you know where no. is my length, where is my edges, right? No, all that that is the okay. That, that is the defined thing, sir. Suppose we want yeah. to draw at that wall, that wall is curved. So at that time, I don't know each and every coordinate of that length. Okay. <laughs> So at that time, uh, it's difficult to draw here, I think. Yeah, at that time, it's uh, difficult to draw. You just because, have to because in case of CFD post, it's easy, sir. OK. So that's why I'm pushing. OK. It's OK. Uh, it, it, is, it, may, it looks like heat and trial, but if you know your geometry very well, uh, I think you will. You should be able to do it. And OK. So. okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to present my uh, Angular uh, window over here. So we were here last time, and this is the profile that we got, uh, constant wall heat flux. Actually, uh, this is not from the para view. This was extracted from the para view, and then uh, it was post-processed in Excel. You can use LibreOffice or any uh, software that handles uh, tables to calculate this. So say if you want to extract uh, this parameter, say 5 and then. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I have a general question. Actually, I was using OpenFoam 10 version, okay, and okay. I ran your uh, solver. 
okay so uh, the thing was that i uh, the bo- there is no buoyant simple foam uh, over there it has been replaced by just buoyant foam simple uh, general server okay now okay. Uh, the same code which uh, you have provided i am not able to solve uh, using uh, this particular solver in the open foam 10 version this brings me to the general question if we have uh, if we have any case files uh, which we uh, got from github or generally anything and we are uh, means we want to update it as uh, regarding a as per uh, to our open form version so what changes we need to do for that uh, it depends on the new version so you need to keep track of what is different in different version for that so generally from version to version there is not much different but in uh, open form 10 uh, they have done some huge changes so i think what could be the issue is uh, the thermal physical properties file the name of the file and if this file could be different in your Uh, open form version 10 they might have changed the name that could be the issue uh, along with the uh, name of the solver but generally from one version to another version there is not much different there may be a new solver that may be available in other version but most of the time they uh, they try to adhere to the standard that was maintained before so suppose in my case uh, i am getting this error when i try to run uh, using buoyant foam keyword pimple is undefined in dictionary home slash my run directory for the open form slash uh, heat flux slash system slash fv solutions so do i need to change something in the fv solution itself yeah that uh, means there is something wrong with the fv solution uh, instead of pimple uh, it may have some other name in open form 10 that could be the thing uh, if you have trouble this kind of trouble what you can do is just copy paste that uh, error that you get in your uh any browser and there are we have a very good community with open form and in cfd online that we mostly use the problem that you have faced might have also been faced by some other uh, other people and they will post the same problem in cfd online you can go there and people will be discussing in that cfd online how to solve that problem uh, even if you don't find say your particular problem you can post it on cfd online you can you have to create an account for that uh, you can create and post on your problem and i'm sure there will be hundreds and of people trying to solve your problem so we have a very good community in open form so if you have a particular pro- particular problem uh, you'll be very easily able to uh, solve it okay sir thank you fine okay so as i was saying uh, you, right now i did a plot and now if i want to extract this plot i can just uh, click on this save data so what it does it uh, allows me to save my the plot that i did in excel sheet or in office libre so i'm just going to make some data file click on okay so i can select the precision the number of digit after the decimal how precise i want my uh, data to be so i can click on okay so after this in my heat flux i will have one more file data so either using access or excel or libre you can post process your data from here also so this was done by doing the same so i calculated uh wall heat flux and this is the result of that and this is the non non dimensional velocity profile and we have a theoretical non dimensional velocity profile y equals to 1 minus x square and this is the one that is generated by open form uh you may notice that there is some uh, difference or deviation at my wall this is because uh i have not used a proper uh, expansion ratio in my wall so that the number of mesh in the wall is uh, much less or much closer so if if i were to use expansion ratio and uh, make such that the near my wall the number of mesh is much fine than the one in my other uh i would be able to eliminate this and uh, this is an assignment problem so right now we wasted much of our geometry to provide parabolic inlet profile let me go back to our geometry so in our geometry from here to here we are actually doing nothing we are just letting our flow develop to a fully developed profile so this uh, so this is how long this is 3.5 meter long but our heat simulation is only being done at 1.5 meter 
So 3.5 meter of our domain length is being just wasted to provide para parabolic uh, boundary or parabolic uh, flow velocity condition. So instead of uh, doing simulation in this part, what we can do is we can provide parabolic inlet profile directly at the inlet. So this is about that. This is one such assignment, parabolic inlet. So we are going to give parabolic inlet velocity profile directly at the inlet. And we will we only have to simulate 1.5 meter of our pipe length for that. And if for parabolic uh, inlet velocity, we will not need the other uh, block that was here before. So we don't need this thing. We can just really ignore and only the second block that was used can be utilized. And this is the code to give parabolic inlet velocity. Let me see what is happening here. Previously, there would be an inlet and then type would be some fixed value and then value will give uniform some value. But now we have to code it and we are using coded fixed value for this thing. So as a type, we are going to give coded fixed value and this value, we are going to give some value uniform. Uniform zero zero. This is just a placeholder. Uh, it won't do anything here. And we are gonna, we are going to name our velocity profile as parabolic velocity. And this is the actual code that gives the parabolic inlet velocity profile. So we are going to type code and has uh, this bracket. And this will open C plus uh, plus. This will allow us to uh, code our inlet velocity using C++. So at the path at boundary. So from here, we are getting the all the uh, miss, miss elements in our miss uh, using this command paths. And when we give do boundary paths.cf, we are actually uh, getting the position of that miss x, y, and z. So now the CF contains the values of X, Y, Z of each of this mesh. So if we have different mesh in our uh, domain, it will just give us the value each uh, X, Y, Z location of the mesh. So if you want to uh, find out the value of Y or X or Z, what we can do is CF bracket face I dot Y. So dot Y bracket will give us the value of the Y of that particular mesh. And this is the scalar uh, variable that we're using. R stands for the radius of our pipe and U max is the maximum velocity that we are going to provide uh, to our uh, parabolic inlet profile. That means if this is a parabolic profile, here the value of U is 0 0.146 at the middle. Now we are going to loop through the all these uh, faces, like all the mesh in our faces. This is that loop for all. And we are going to give a uh, scalar value r in which we are going to uh, give the value of y coordinate so c of face i dot y will give the value of the y coordinate and finally here we are providing the value of velocity so what is this vector velocity we are giving as a vector so this is for y and this is for z now this will look familiar to you so so if I were to write it, uh, it would look like this U times one minus R by R square. This is the expression for a uh, parabolic profile in a pipe flow. This is that. So this is how you give that profile. So this R it is getting from here. And this R is a constant that is defined over here. So like this, using this expression, it is giving the velocity as a vector. So this is the assignment problem. And you can uh, click on this to get that assignment. I'm going to copy paste that in the chat. You can do it at your own time when you're free. And this is the uh, non-dimensional velocity profile that you get by using uh, parabolic inlet velocity. And same at uh, 1.4 meter temperature profile. And finally, uh, instead of providing a fixed gradient, right now in our simulation, uh, in our heated pipe section, we provided fixed gradient, that is a temperature gradient. We could also provide temperature of the wall. 
So if you want to provide temperature of the wall, this is how you do it. Pipe heated type fixed value. And then you need you give the value of the temperature that is 310 uh, Kelvin. And uh, like I said, uh, in equation of state, you can provide uh, different uh, parameters. The one that we used uh, currently was rho constant. That means we assume the density is constant. It doesn't change changes with, with temperature. Uh, the other parameters that can be used are perfect gas. So based on this equation, value of pressure and temperature, it is going to calculate density. Uh, this will be important for density driven flow. And you can also assume perfect fluid. Uh, so instead of uh, perfect gas, this is for perfect fluid. This is for gas and this is for fluid. That is the only difference. And this is a Boisnes approximation. In Boisnes approximation, what we do is we uh, assume that only density is dependent on time, while other parameters in our uh, other properties of our uh, fluid doesn't change with time. Sorry, with temperature, not time. And uh, other is icopolynomial. That is uh, density is a function of temperature. It is almost same as uh, Boisnes approximation. Here also we say that other parameters doesn't depend on temperature. Only density depends on temperature, and that dependence is based on this some uh, function that is a polynomial function. So thank you. Uh, my session has ended here. If you have any question, you can ask us. Sir, uh, in the heat flux, you provided fixed gradient. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, I think there is another way of uh, providing heat flux directly without dividing by thermal conductivity. Uh, the name of that boundary condition is, is external wall heat flux temperature. Yeah, that so also you I... can do uh, because there is information. So in our thermal physical properties, we have provided information of thermal uh, conductivity. So if you use that, open form will automatically calculate your uh, heat flux based on that. Temperature okay. gradient or heat flux based on that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so should we move on to the next session, Abushan? Yeah, I think I'm, I think we are running out of time, right? So. Yeah.